Good morning, guys. We're going to talk about uh, some of the riper research that we, we conducted last year. Uh, so, you know, with the drought going on, my phone was ringing off the hook. Uh, just tons and tons of questions. Hey, should I apply ripener to short cane? Will the ripener work? Should I increase or reduce my rate? What's the best time of the day to apply it? Should I be putting a surfactant with it? Should I be putting ammonium sulfate uh, with it? Uh, should I use modus? Just lots and lots of questions. So we tried to uh, answer some of these questions uh, with our first experiments. We went up to Cheneyville and worked with Michael Harper. Uh, we wanted to get a good look at 885 being a new variety, trying to get uh, uh, an idea of what the response would be on that variety. And um, I mean, if you watch the crop, the leaves are wide open, wide and, and, and laying out in the morning. And by the time we got to the 100 degree days, they were shriveled up and curled up. So in my mind, we were gonna get better efficacy applying that product early in the morning versus late in the night. So uh, later in the afternoon when we were starting to see these conditions. So we looked at a, 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 a number of different treatments. We had our standard Power Max treatment uh, we also had uh, Power Max plus a surfactant with a water conditioner, um, a high rate of Power Max and a half rate of Power, power Max modus. And then we, we did this with the drones. We applied it either early morning between 6.55 uh, and 7.38 or, or between 1.10 and 1.50 that afternoon or kind of our treatments. So let's talk about surfactants and, and, and um, water conditioners. Um, so glyphosate doesn't have a whole it's a loaded product but when you really look at the amount of surfactants you have in that product when we put it out at five ounces there's not a whole lot so a surfactant what it's going to do is going to help that that water droplet spread across that leaf area and you get better uptake as far as a water conditioner putting an ammonium sulfate type product that's going to help if you have hard water pro problems but if you don't have hard water putting ammonium sulfate doesn't do anything so what is hard water we have some ions, uh, calcium carbonates, uh, uh, some other cations like magnesium and iron that basically can bind or react with glyphosate and it changes that molecular structure of glyphosate. And once you change that molecular structure, there are proteins that help glyphosate get into the plant where it needs to be. And I'm not talking about getting through the leaf, but getting through that cell membrane. So you, if you change that structure, it's like a puzzle piece then it can't pass through that, that cellular membrane. So w when you add some like ammonium sulfate uh, to uh, your, your water solution, that ammonium sulfate reacts with th those, those cation, you know, cations with that calcium, so it makes a calcium sulfate, and that ammonia can bind to the glyphosate molecule, and ammonium glyphosate can pass through that cell membrane. So, so that's the only reason you would ever put it out. But this product interactive that Helena has is both a surfactant and a water conditioner for hard water. So we wanted to, to, to put that in the mix. Um, the modus label, if you look at where it's in red here, it says do not apply to stress cane from uh, lack of uh, water. I think we had that across the, the belt. So we really didn't know what kind of efficacy we were gonna get with it. So, you know, th this was a really good study in, in a lot of ways. Now, if you look at that cane, this wasn't that picture that feel, but it was one that Lance Rodriguez sent me because he asked me if it was comparable to what we did. We, when we applied this on August 17th, they had two and a half foot of hard joint. Cane looked rough, uh, you know, suffering from moisture. We went in and hand sampled like we'd normally do uh, 13 days after application. And you can look at the data here, uh, regardless of treatment, whether we applied it in the, after, the morning or the afternoon, or we increased the rate of glyphosate, the surfactants, statistically, the TRSs were all comparable and much better than, than the, uh, the non-treated check. So at 13 days, we had about a 15% increase. So I was pretty excited to see that in that short amount of time. Uh, as you know, 885 gets lazy on us. They caught our thunder banger and actually caught uh, two inches of rain on our plot on, on uh, September 2nd. It went flat, and when we made our next sampling, I really questioned why I went to college to fight to get through this cane. 
it was a beast. And, and you know, I've heard several comments here about how tough it was to cut with the machine. Believe you me, it was tough to crawl through. Uh, 27 days, uh, same trends that we saw at 14 days. The ripener looks like it's working amazingly well. So man, 30% increase in TRS. I'm, I'm blown away. I'm talking to consultants. I'm going, man, this, we're going to have a great year. I don't think the drought's going to be that impactful uh, on, on, on uh, the efficacy of ripener. We, grinding was delayed uh, at Lasuka, so we, we, we wanted to harvest this at 35 days, uh, uh, but it pushed us back to 46 to October 2nd. And uh, we went in for our last sampling, and, and still, I mean, when I look at these TRS numbers, they're unbelievable. Uh, I mean, I think anybody would take a 300 all day long at the, uh, on your crop. Um, but if you looked at the, the untreated check for, for the uh, 885, you could see it progressively getting better, and it was really sweet at the, the, er, the early part of this crop. Now, again, this is drought stress cane. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, that, that we don't understand hormonally. You know, hormones control, they're, they're signaling molecules. They tell plants to respond in different ways, and we don't respond. Notice here in this red circle, if you ever looked at tissue culture, uh, callus tissue, I've never seen this before with glyphosate where you get this little clustering. So every plot, regardless of the treatment, if it had glyphosate, had this little clustering. And then you had the la-las above it like you would normally see. But it was really kind of weird and funky. Uh, so um, that was number one. The rest of the work we, we did was on the sugar research station. I know we heard a lot of climate talks yesterday, talk about rainfall. Thanks to Dr. Paul White, we have a weather station. We had a total of 39.2 inches. Um, July looks like we got a good bit of rain, but I told Kenna, we had 3.4 inches of rain on July 17th. And I said, man, that's our million dollar rain for the research station. And after that, we did not have a substantial rainfall. So if you look from uh, August 22nd to, to October 12th, not enough rain to talk about. Um, you know, the crop really showed it. Um, so, you know, I'd say w we had a, a, a pretty representative, not as bad as out west the cane was, but we definitely had some dr drought stress. So we're going to talk about a study I looked at, Amazomax, which is a, a potential new molecule. And you may say, Al, why y'all looking at all these products? We got products that work. Well, this last night I found out, you know, we're talking about a federal judge making a ruling on the slaver case, well, a federal judge made a ruling on using Extendamax and um, Ingenia, and there's one more, maybe Tavium, saying that we can't put it over the top of Roundup Ready Extendamax soybeans or cotton anymore. So that, that just came out last night. So, you know, with glyphosate and its negative perception, we better have uh, Ace in our, in our pocket in case. So we looked at that. Uh, this is kind of in conjunction with the Florida industry. They brought it to me. Uh, we, we met at an ASSCT in Florida several years ago. They said, you've ever looked at this molecule? I said, I have not. Uh, so, so this is our second year looking at it. We looked at, at four different rates from one ounces all the way to four ounces. We included our standard Pyramax in there and an untreated check. And we sampled that cane for, for six weeks. Uh, the only rate that of the Imazamox, the Beyond Extra, that shows a little potential is maybe that four ounce rate, um, but it's a lot higher than BASF really wants to pursue. That one ounce rate, we could get a label pretty quick for, but if you look at the one ounce rate across the data table, you're really not getting any benefit uh, from it uh, compared to what we do. Uh, tonnage from our trials this year, for the rest of them were highly variable. Uh, and, and, and so was sugar per acre. So we don't see a whole lot of significance in most of the studies that we're going to look at uh, from this point on. I attribute it to the drought. I may be wrong or right. You know, cane yield is one of those highly variable things. But in this study, the power max actually had higher tonnage than the untreated checks. Uh, our second study we did with Amazomox was actually to look at the surfactant. So this is not a, a loaded product like glyphosate is. And one of the uh, agronomists from BASF said, Al, what kind of surfactant do you use with that? When you did your research, I said a non-ionic surfactant. He said, oh, we see a lot better uptake 
if we use a crop oil or methylated seed oil. So that's what we wanted to look at. Um, was there a difference between the two? So uh, we used two different uh, surfactants. We used the uh, Induce and Agridex was our crop oil uh, with the one ounce rate. And uh, again, when you look at, at sucrose uh, increase compared to the check, uh, the one ounce rate, uh, regardless of what surfactant we did of a Mazamox is not enough to pull up that sucrose level. Uh, and when you look at Pyramax, it's doing what it, it's supposed to, you know, uh, it's consistent tonnage again, not, not significant in this study, and sugar per acre, not significant. Um, variety response, you know, Dr. Kenneth does a lot for this industry and he takes care of me. He's always got that vision looking forward, what's coming down the pipeline. So he, he, he always plants a little extra cane and, and he, he's uh, kind enough to let me do some, some first looks on how varieties are gonna respond. So uh, we looked at uh, 306, 508, and 738, which is eligible for lease this year. So, um, you know, small plot work, only three reps, but, but again, I think some valuable data. This is 31 days after treatment we uh, sampled this cane. Um, the 306 uh, looked like it responded well to that half rate of glyphosate and 11 ounces of modus. Um, the Power Max really didn't, we didn't see a big response and that was kind of makes me scratch my head on, on the, those results to be uh, quite frank with you. Um, but you know, that, that's what the data showed in, in this situation. 508, uh, one of the varieties that I think we're pretty excited about. Um, responded fairly well to both the, the power max or the, the uh, half rate of power max uh, plus modus. So uh, looks like it's gonna do okay. Um, again, uh, cane tonnage and sugar per acre, not really statistically different uh, amongst the treatments. 738, have to say this was the prettiest cane on the station. It was planted on ice cream. I don't know what date Kenneth planted it on but it was just a beast. And it responded really well to both the glyphosate and uh, the modus treatments uh, when you look at, at, at TRS um, above the control. Now, the tonnages, th this was just two rows that Kenneth had increased. You had sunlight on both sides of it. So uh, I think that kind of artificially uh, definitely inflated the, the cane yields number. But this was, it was just tall and straight and, and, and beautiful uh, when, when we did this. And, you know, 63 tons in the untreated was this, this darn impressive. Let's move on to generic uh, Trinexapac ethyl. Trinexapac ethyl was the active ingredient in MODIS. Um, one of the, the knocks on MODIS is the cost. I personally bought a jug of MODIS last year at the co-op. 11 ounces of motors cost me $27 an acre. That's a pretty expensive lick compared to, to glyphosate. Um, Atticus, the chemical company that brought us the first s chlor molecule, actually uh, manufactures this Mazada. And I wanna thank Blaine Viator for helping me get my hands on it uh, earlier than I think they were ready to. Um, so, you know, as a generic, we, we just wanna see if they compare apples to apples. Uh, so, so we did a little work on, on the research station uh, in St. Gabriel. Um, the AI is a, a, just a hair more than, than the, the modus. So we adjusted our rates to put out the same amount of active ingredient uh, per acre. So uh, two and a half ounces of uh, Pyramax with either Mazada, 10.9 um, uh, ounces of Mazada or 11 ounces of modus. Then we all had our standard five ounces of uh, Pyramax and an untreated check in this situation. Uh, statistically, um, the, the Mazada and the Modus shook out the same, even though you see a 10 pound difference uh, with them. We're gonna evaluate this product some more. This is a first look at it. We'd like to get some more data. I'm not sure if the product's gonna be uh, available or not, uh, but you know, we wanna look at the efficacy and have another option uh, because I, I think it has a fit in our industry. May not fit on every acre, uh, but I worked up some data for Blaine Viator looking at every experiment that I had with this half rate of uh, glyphosate and modus 
and compared it to glyphosate. Uh, and we were about two pounds of sugar per ton difference at the end of the day with the, the, the uh, several research trials that we've done so far. So um, again, looking at tonnage and, and sugar per acre, not statistically different. Uh, you know, you see some trends to be higher where you have the, the glyphosate treatments. Uh, wrapping it up here, let's talk about just some summary data that I've done, some, some metadata. So uh, I pulled data from 2011 all the way to 2023, one 299, and you see the application date. And what I really tried to kind of hone in is, is that 28 to 35 day range. And I just wanted to see what the average response was with glyphosate versus the check. And uh, you know, 22.7% is the average of these trials. So if we compare 2023 in this dry year, it wasn't nearly as responsive as to the previous year. It's not nearly as responsive to the average, but we did get some benefit without a doubt from, from using this. My last slide, uh, data slide, I won't, I also pulled every variety that we, we've worked on. So some of this is Dr. Ben Lejean's work uh, before I was doing the ripener work from, from 2001 to 2023. So, you know, you know, that's over 20 years of data, uh, 159 data points, um, anywhere from, um, or 159 trials, anywhere from on August 14th to September 17th application. So we are on the front end of the application window and I was talking with Lewis earlier, you, you, you always get your biggest response with glyphosate in immature cane. As cane naturally matures, that response, that percentage decreases. So we always try to be on the front end where we're gonna get our most bang for our back. But the treatment harvest interval from 25 to 59 days. And look, we, we've looked at a number of different glyphosate products over time and compared them, and they're in this data set. Um, when we look at our 159 observations for pounds, uh, for TRS, uh, you know, we're in that 40 pound increase range over all of these trials, 20%, 20.4%, pretty good data set. Tonnage, we lost about three tons and we only have 41 data points because not all our trials when we sample, we take to yield. Some of them are just looking at TRS, some of them we take all the way. The big point is sugar per acre, uh, you know, 11.9% increase, a thousand pounds more with glyphosate versus without. So, so my big point is, you know, this industry is expanding. Um, I think Dr. Kenneth said we had 532,000 acres this year. We had a 17 million ton crop year before last, uh, and the freeze really kind of put the damper on it. I think this is going to be a even more important tool as, as we continue. And regardless of weather and pattern in one year, I think it, it's, a, it's a great investment for our industry. Uh, it, it works, and, and especially with the increased cost of trucking cane, uh, you, you know, fewer tons, higher sugar per ton, higher sugar per acre, I think it's a win-win for the industry. And with that, I'll, I'll take any questions. Yes, sir. Uh, no, I, I couldn't pick up any. The data was w w was so so variable. Um, I, I I just really didn't. If if you go to the northern part of the, the belt uh, where they experienced drought, they they were off quite a bit. I talked to some growers in the western part; they were forty percent below. I talked to some growers in the southern part of the belt that this was their best crop ever. Mm -hmm. So it was so highly variable throughout the belt. Uh, They still spray ripener, uh, uh, but but the, the one test I did there, we didn't take it to you. Mm 